Now the best way to get good at any calculations involving circuits is just to do lots and lots of questions and that's why this is my only worksheet which has four sides of questions because I wanted to have some nice big things here. So series and parallel circuits. For question one, we're looking at the current in different places and you've got to remember that in a parallel circuit, the current will split at a junction. So if we've got 1.2 amps going down here, and I put some arrows on to help me work out what's going on, if you've got 1.2 amps here, and we know that there's 0.6 amps over here, then that means 0.6 amps must go that way. And again, we find the same for the other questions here where I just used, as I kind of drew my diagrams here, I kind of worked out maybe D first of all, 1.8, take away 0 0.4, leaves 1.4 here, and then that 1.4, take away 0 0.6, leaves 0 0.8, going through point E. And again, I did exactly the same with these ones over here, just working uh, step by step, thinking again, at each junction, what happens is that the current splits going different ways around that circuit. It's different though, when we look at potential difference. So the potential difference across each loop is gonna be the same. So we've got three volts where there's going to be three volts across each of these components. For this one over here though, the way I thought about it initially was thinking, okay, let's look at the top loop. We've got six volts from the battery, or the two cells. One volt is going across that resistor, that leaves five volts across component D. And we could have done the same by thinking, well, you've got six volts here, one volt there, so that leaves five across E, and also five across F. For this one over here, um, again, let's think about G. Well, let's ignore the rest of the circuit. We've got eight volts across from that. Two volts here leaves six volts across G. And if we think about the loop going through H, you've got eight volts, take away two, take away two, leaving four volts across H. And again, in a similar math method, these are my answers, and I did it by working out around each individual loop, the values for I, J, and K. Now the last one, a lot of work going on here to get some simple answers. So at A, we wanted to find the current, B, the resistance, and C, the current. So for here, um, at A, what I had to do was I had to work out if we know that there's a certain resistance with a certain potential difference, we can work out the current. So I chose the right equation. I put in the numbers from the question that I had so far to find that the current here is 0 0.45. Now, um, at B, we've got the current. We know the potential difference is 4.5. And so the resistance is equal to V over I. So that's equal to the potential difference of 4.5 divided by the current of 0.9 to find that that's got a resistance of 5 ohms. And if we know the current through A and the current on this part here, we can add them together to find the current that goes through C. So it's just 0.45 plus 0.9, which is 1.35. And again, for the other questions, all I did was just work around using these different values here. So at D, we're going to have the same potential difference as we do across the cells of 6 volts. I then, to find the value of E, the current, we know the potential difference across that 50 ohm resistor was 6, and therefore I equals V over R, 6 over 15, which was 0 0.4. And to find the resistance of this variable resistor uh, that we had at F, um, if we know there's 0.8 of an amp there, 0.4 of an amp is going through this resistor, then that also then means that there's 0.4 of an amp going down here, um, and that means that the resistance is equal to 15 ohms. Okay, so if we know this current, we've worked out that current, we can find out this current, and with this current and that potential difference, we can find the resistance. And again, I did exactly the same, just working around each component individually, trying to find whatever it might be. So for this one over here, um, across the 2 ohm resistor, I worked out the potential difference as 8 minus 2 minus 2, which is 4. Okay, and then I is equal to V over R. 4 uh, volts divided by 2 ohms give, gives the value of 2 amps. And for this one over here, what I had to do was work out the current in different parts of the circuit. Now, there's going to be 4.8 seven volts across this resistor there's also going to be 4.7 volts across this resistor so what we can now do is we can work out the current in the 47 ohm resistor because we know the potential difference is 4.7 the resistance is 47 giving a current of 0 0.10 amp and then over here we know across this component if there's 0.7 volts across that 
that leaves 4 volts across the 25 ohm resistor. Again, we can work out the current. We add the current here to the current here to work out the current in H. That one there, really, really tricky. And if you can do these kind of questions, that's kind of working at an A-level physics standard of stuff. And this is going to be so much harder than the kind of things you'd get in a GCSE test. So those are my answers to these questions about series and parallel circuits.